What are some of the biggest mistakes that I made trying Grim Dawn, and how can you avoid them? Well, first off, if you haven't played Grim Dawn before, or you're not sure if the game is for you, then do be sure to check out my full review, which will be linked in the card and down in the description below, then come back to this video. But if you've already decided to pick the game up, or maybe pick it back up after trying it and not really liking it, then here are some mistakes that I found myself making through my first, and second, and then third playthrough, and what I ended up doing to avoid them. The advice I'm going to give here focuses heavily on the early game, because while yes, there are some mistakes that can impact your choices during Elite and even Ultimate difficulty, most of the time, things can be fixed later with money, with one special exception that I'll get into shortly. But if you make too many mistakes early, your progression will definitely be hampered, and you might end up with a quit moment as a result, since Grimdon is pretty complicated. So first off, put points into your class and rank up a few abilities. It's better to have one really high level skill that provides a majority of your damage, than take the scattershot approach and end up leveling five different things, none of which are too effective. Ranking a skill up adds more damage, but also adds more cost whereas ranking up your class gives you access to a wider variety of skills. There are going to be some things that are 1.1 wonders. However, it's usually more advantageous to invest in those during the mid-game, and early on focus on making your main skill, whatever you want to focus on, the best it can possibly be. As you continue to level up, you'll also be able to pick a second class. Your primary class and secondary class combine to make your build, and this is one of a few choices in Grim Dawn that you can't change. So, do choose wisely, though if you're willing to search around on Nexus mods for a bit, you might be able to find a mod that lets you reverse the decision later. Another way a lot of characters get power is Devotion, which is a system that's somewhat confusing, because you fill out these constellations which grant devotion to the gods, and use that devotion to then fill out more constellations to get special exclusive skills, which have to be attached to your other skills to ultimately gain more bonuses. And I'm going to be honest, I'm not very good at navigating Devotion myself, so I've had to do a couple of respecs for it, and it gets pretty pricey. To avoid this, don't spend your Devotion points willy-nilly. Try to find out what your end goal is using something like Grim Dawn tools before you start spending. If you know how much you'll need to get to the end goal, say a larger constellation with a powerful effect, then it's easier to plan things out, and worst case, you'll only have to do some minor respecs later. Of course, to assign devotion, you need to obtain it, and that's where exploration comes in. You should always look around for the various nooks and crannies. Some of these include side areas, and oftentimes these side areas have shrines. Shrines are broken down into several different types. Sometimes you need to fight a bunch of enemies, other times you need to offer an item. Either way, shrines will give you devotion, and while getting a few early is quite helpful, don't worry if you miss one or two, it's totally fine because you'll always be able to get them when you play on a higher difficulty later. And for a special bonus tip, while you're exploring, be sure to rotate your camera. This can help you find things that you otherwise would have missed. Now, a minute ago, I mentioned difficulty modes, and you might be tempted to start the game on Veteran, especially if you want a challenging experience. But I don't think Veteran's really worth it. It gives a small bonus to your experience while making enemies significantly tankier, which often leads to very long drawn out fights because your character isn't fully assembled. If you're after a challenge, don't worry, there's plenty of time on Elite and Ultimate to challenge dangerous foes. It's better to keep it simple and just stick to normal. Focus on learning the game rather than powering through, and you should have a pretty good time. Also, early on you don't get that much loot, but later you'll get quite a lot. So don't ignore your loot filter. A loot filter, like in most ARPGs, is great at sorting out stuff you want versus stuff you don't. You can get pretty specific or you can just go fairly broad and disable all the low-level junk items. Personally, I like the broad sweeping approach, but the filter does have access to fine-grained controls as well. Stick with your preference, and when in doubt, you can always adjust it later. Having to play through the game multiple times on different difficulty levels is personally my least favorite part of Grim Dawn. But if you're going to be playing through and plan to beat Ultimate, you do have to think about it as multiple playthroughs and not just one. And what I mean by this is your decisions when it comes to faction and reputation do carry over between difficulty modes. This means as you continue to play through on Elite and Ultimate, 
you'll have access to better items, and your allies and enemies will be far more deeply entrenched. So if there's one faction you really want to be friendly with, because some of the items they offer are very nice, you can always check that early on and do extra quests for them through earlier playthroughs, hoping to gain their favor by the end. Something else that changes as you go up in difficulty is the importance of resistances. Grimdon has a lot of different stats and resistances. On your first character, you can mostly be fine by clicking physique a lot and only going into cunning and spirit when you need it for gear. When it comes to resistances, normal mode is fairly forgiving, but elite and ultimate really won't be. Especially capping things like physical resistance is going to become very important. And because Grimdon has so many types, you'll struggle to find room for offensive stats on gear. From my experience, this doesn't seem to be too much of a problem. I've always found that I can easily drop damage so long as I focused on a core of several good skills and pick up the extra defenses as I scaled into Elite. Right before, I personally usually got bored of that character and ended up putting the game down, only to come back to it and start a new character much later. Now, unlike Diablo or Path of Exile, Grimdon doesn't really have a potion system. Healing's honestly pretty difficult. Certain skills will heal you, certain item effects can heal you, but rations will be a huge part of your early game recovery. You can recover rations by eating food, and this means passively you'll heal after you get out of combat. So don't be afraid to kite some of the scarier enemies or bosses around so that you have that precious time to heal up. Now, next up, I'm going to get into a couple more advanced tips. Before I do though, if you've been enjoying the video, why not leave a like? It's a great way to help me out with the YouTube algorithm. And if you want to see more content like this, be sure to get subscribed. I do play a lot of games like Path of Exile and Torchlight Infinite, but I like plenty of other ARPGs as well. So, as you get subscribed, maybe leave me a comment letting me know your favorite ARPG and why you want me to play it. With that said, here's a couple quick advanced tips that I found to be extremely helpful across multiple playthroughs. The first is, pay attention to your progression resources. Sometimes you'll need things like scrap or dynamite in order to progress through a key event. And while you can go around gathering them, it's better to kind of save them. Don't spend them needlessly, and always keep one or two lying around just in case it's needed for a quest. Or in the case of scrap, more like keep 10 to 15 lying around, because it's probably going to be needed for a quest, and might let you do something cool like unlock the literal gates of hell. Also, as you continue your Grim Dawn journey, especially as you get into higher difficulties, pay more attention to crafting. This could start with something simple, like crafting gear enhancements including ectoplasm, but later on you're going to be making some quite powerful items and want to pay attention to both the stats and the level requirement. Don't be afraid to level up a bit, just to use that piece of gear that you crafted. And last but not least, don't be afraid to just explore the game and make your own path. I've played Grim Dawn for over 100 hours, I can definitely say that I've enjoyed the game, despite its sometimes janky melee combat, and I've never actually beaten it, at least if beating it on ultimate counts as beating it. So don't worry about playing the best build, or completing the story the fastest. Just play Grim Dawn in a way that's enjoyable to you. But with that said, those are the things that I wish I knew sooner about Grim Dawn. With that said, I'm curious. If you're new to Grim Dawn, what have you found to be the most confusing or difficult, and did these tips and tricks help answer your question? Or, if you're a Grim Dawn expert with hundreds if not thousands of hours, what are your top tips for new players? Leave those thoughts down in the comments below. Before I go, a special thanks to my patrons and channel members for their continued support. If you want something else to watch, YouTube will have a recommendation on screen right now. I'll also have several other ARPG recommendations up in the card and down in the description below. So be sure to check that out if you're looking for other ARPGs to play. And again, if there's any other ARPGs you'd like me to cover, do leave those thoughts down below as well. But that's it for me today. I hope you learned something, and I hope to see you again sometime soon.